Hello and welcome to UK Paranormal Files. In the 1980s, the Beast of Exmoor generated both headlines and ridicule for people who managed to capture grainy video and photos of a supposed big cat freely roaming around in the southwest of England. But ever since then, in all parts of the UK, more and more people have come forward to report their own sightings of anomalous big cats lurking around this island. This might sound unusual to someone listening from outside the UK, and so for the uninitiated and unaware, let me state plainly that there are, officially at least, no native big cat species in the UK. We do have a native wild cat, which is of a size approximately similar to a house cat, though the population of these is now small having reduced drastically in the 20th century, and the only native wildcats thought to be here are limited to regions in the Scottish Highlands. This is a bit of an unusual topic to cover for a couple of reasons. Often when I make a video about a paranormal topic, it can be challenging to find sufficient information and reports from varying sources. But with the subject of UK big cats in the wild, there are now so many sightings that the opposite position is true in this case. I've thus decided in pursuing this topic to focus in on one legend, that of the Beast of Bucks. But even by refining my focus to one such local legend, the reality is that the Beast of Bucks is itself an umbrella term or legend, which actually encompasses the sighting of many different big cats from all across Buckinghamshire and throughout the Chiltern Hills. Another unusual situation for me is that, usually, no matter how in-depth I cover a particular topic, and no matter how much compelling evidence I present, it is often the situation that those cases become no closer to becoming accepted as facts or reality by sceptics, whereas I can feel safe in declaring up front that in the case of UK big cats, for a number of reasons, general acceptance could come almost any day. In fact, I can tell myself right now, it is a fine and valid subject to cover on the channel by virtue of its proponents being active within the cryptozoology world. But we're perhaps one nighttime road accident and a taxidermist commission short of this topic moving fully away from the cryptozoologists and into zoologist territory. Anyway, I would like to approach this from a number of different angles. Firstly, let's take a look at the broad history and theories. Second, we will take a look at some recent eyewitness reports, and then we'll consider the implications and possible future. The Beast of Bucks has been sighted all around Buckinghamshire and throughout the Chilterns. It is my understanding that there are more than 25 reports of sightings made to the police each year from members of the public. The Bucks Free Press is the local newspaper within Buckinghamshire, and it is a delight for me to be able to state that they have become a good resource within this field and have published numerous eyewitness reports over many years, and you will find that many of their articles address the situation with the proper seriousness and diligence that this topic requires. Additionally, a dedicated researcher and big cat enthusiast called Paolo Nicolades has spent much time researching and collecting eyewitness reports. It is from his Big Cats of the Chilterns website that much useful information can be found. In regards to the Beast of Bucks, Paolo has established there is a growing body of evidence. Within Buckinghamshire, there are many eyewitnesses who have given statements regarding seeing three distinct species of big cat. Black panther or black leopards, puma and lynx. Evidence can occasionally be found in woodlands of cat footprints, scrapes and scratched trees. There are photographs and corpses have been found and signs of cat predation. With any cryptozoological study, the chief questions begin with habitat and food sources, and when analysing the big cat topic, this is no different. Buckinghamshire has a lot of woodlands and open fields. It is not impossible to conclude that there is plenty of space for big cats to hide away safely from humans. We know from all around the world 
that big cats like to hunt at night, and the big cats of the UK are no different. However, Paolo states two theories regarding big cat food sources. Quote, I recently conducted a two-day experiment around the Chilterns for an article I was composing for a national magazine. The experiment involved covering a certain distance of rural roads by car and weighing road-killed animals as I found them. From this, I formulated and estimated that there was probably 300 kilograms of freshly killed meat on Buckinghamshire's roads at any one time. Additionally, a second food source is available to wildcats roaming the UK, that of the domestic dog. Unfortunately, some of the eyewitness reports which are made to the Bucks Free Press do contain reports from dog walkers and detail injuries, and some dogs are never seen again. Cats who get a taste for a fox via hunting or roadkill may well find our often docile and friendly companions to be easy targets particularly if left unattended outdoors at night. I always link to my sources in the description section down below, and I will link to the Big Cats of the Chilterns webpage. But I will caution that on the evidence page there are some graphic images on that site that some people might find upsetting, particularly around this subject. A pertinent question you might be asking yourself right now is, how did these cats find their way to the UK in the first place? And you might even wonder if they've always been there, or if these sightings are a recent phenomenon. The chief theory overall is that these cats, or more probably their ancestors, were released into the wild in the 1970s. Between the late 50s and early 1970s, there was a growing trend for people to import exotic animals to keep as pets. And as the trend evolved and time moved on, there were reports of people keeping more and more exotic and sometimes deadly animals. This trend certainly included big cats, but also included the keeping of exotic snakes, spiders and primates. In 1976, the UK government passed the Dangerous Wild Animals Act that was aimed at providing a framework to ensure keepers had a license to keep their exotic animals and that they had adequate controls in place, such as tanks or fencing, and that they safeguarded the well-being of the animal but also required the purchasing of liability insurance. Well, some people went along with the new rules, but many did not, and faced with the choice of fines or much increased costs to keep their animals, many people simply turned their exotic pets loose into the wild, which it seems many people did without ever facing any consequences. Over the subsequent five decades, there are now regular sighting reports coming in and it is strongly speculated that many of these animals are the ancestors of those released animals, and that they have subsequently established breeding populations and migration routes in the British countryside. I would like to take a look at a few eyewitness reports, but before I do, I just want to deviate briefly. A number of regular commenters have been truly lovely in the comments section of my videos, and along the way, I have been asked how people can help support me in the channel. I always ask at the end of my videos that people click the thumbs up button if they have enjoyed watching, as well as the much appreciated actions of sharing my videos on social media and engaging in the comments. All of this is great for me, but some people have asked how to help monetarily. So I've set up a page on the Buy Me A Coffee site, whereby I would gladly accept one-off contributions from as little as £5 from people who have enjoyed my videos and who would like to contribute. I know as well as anybody that times are tough, so please only contribute if you can afford to do so. It is a one-time donation with no repeat obligations or monthly commitment. I've only recently set up the page, but I do want to give a shout out to Steve Devo Davis for his generous donations, and give him a shout out in this episode as the sole member of the UK Paranormal Files Coffee Club. For anyone who is happy to contribute, if you do so up until the time I edit the next video for my main channel, then not only will you feel great for having helped out and support a small time but dedicated YouTuber, you will also get a shout out in the next main channel video as a member of the UK Paranormal Files Coffee Club. Anyway, back to the case in hand. This first report comes from an eyewitness who is of completely impeccable character, a person whose word is beyond question and whose character is completely unblemished. 
In other words, I would like to begin by sharing my own personal eyewitness report. In the early hours of Sunday the 17th of July 2016, I was at home with my wife, brother-in-law and his girlfriend, and we were enjoying a few drinks after having met up with some friends on the Saturday evening for a curry at a local establishment. We were at my then home in Beaconsfield in Buckinghamshire. We lived on an estate that had formerly been an army base and were renting ex-services accommodation. The estate was partially still in the control of the Ministry of Defence, so one side of the estate was fenced off to the public completely. To another side were open fields and a small border to one of the local golf clubs. On another side was a busy main road, separated from the estate by some wild grassland and a wooded area which was off limits to the residents. Although on that evening we were enjoying some late drinks, none of us were in any way inebriated and we were enjoying a nice conversation. At about 3am I walked up the stairs to visit the loo. At the top of the stairs there was a good sized window which allowed for a view of the entire front of my house, my neighbours front gardens and the area of houses across the road to me. The upstairs lights were off, including at the top of the landing, and the outside front area was illuminated by standard street lighting. As I went up the stairs I looked out the window, which was something I normally did out of habit, and I noticed a bushy-tailed fox at the end of my front lawn, near my parked car which was situated on the road. I did my business and about 90 seconds later returned to the landing with the intention to walk back down the stairs again, when I turned my head to look out the window. I saw just across the road something moving towards my car. I stood still and observed a big black cat. It walked around the back of my car and then passed it on the side nearest to me, before proceeding along the pathway and then turning to walk down my neighbour's driveway, again on the near side of their car. The cat then disappeared from my view. This cat was large. I can say with 100% certainty that this was no house cat. It was entirely too big. I had two frames of reference for size, being both mine and my neighbour's cars, and in both instances the head was at the height of the wing mirrors. I drive a UK Ford Focus model car. As the cat walked in the direction of my neighbour's front door and down their drive, I could for a moment see the cat almost face on and it was undoubtedly a cat's face. It had no snout or muzzle like that of a dog or deer. And although it was the wrong colour, it instantly triggered in me the thought that the shape was similar to the facial shape of a British short hair cat, similar to the one I had had when we were growing up. I observed what I took to be a black panther for a matter of about 8 to 10 seconds, and the whole time it was in view, I remained still at the top of my stairs. It later struck me how completely calm and unnervous the cat had appeared. It was in no way moving as if it was stalking something, it moved freely and confidently around in the night. Once it had moved away from my view, I ran down the stairs, grabbed my phone and ran out into the night. I rounded the corner of my garage and onto my neighbour's front driveway, where although I couldn't see the cat anymore, I snapped a few pictures in the dark with the flash turned on. To the side of my neighbour's house was a grass laid walkthrough which ran around the back of our sets of houses, only at this point I was unaware of that fact as I'd never walked around there because I'd never had any need to. But all I could see was this dark area of grass under a huge tree and given the size of the cat I had just seen and the darkness right in front of me, I quickly then concluded it was not a space I wanted to enter into alone that night. So I went back inside having not been outside for more than probably 20 seconds, and it's at that point I informed my wife about what I had seen. I then reviewed the hastily taken photos and found that I hadn't captured the image of a cat. Being that it was 3am and having had a few drinks, it didn't seem like a good idea to phone the police. In the subsequent days, I considered what to do and started to search the internet, which is when I started to get a picture of how frequent these sightings were happening. After some research, a few weeks later, I submitted my eyewitness report to Paolo via the Big Cats and the Chilterns website. A few weeks after this, in October 2016, 
another eyewitness contacted Paolo and stated they too had seen a black cat on the golf course which is adjacent to my estate. There have been many other sightings and interactions over the years. Also in October 2016, the Bucks Free Press ran a story about a dog that was injured in Tom Burt's Hill Park in High Wycombe and how it was, quote, sparking fears about the Beast of Bucks' return. The piece goes on to detail how an unsuspecting dog, Daisy, had briefly disappeared into some undergrowth and had suddenly yelped in pain, which prompted Daisy's owner to go and find her urgently. Daisy suffered severe gashes down the side of her body, prompting her owner to grab Daisy and make an emergency trip to the vets. The article states that other dog walkers had made reports of a panther in the area, although they do not go into further detail about this. They also state that the vet's nurse surmised that the injuries may have come from a rutting stag. National newspaper The Sun also picked up on the story and published pictures of Daisy's injury, which I shall briefly share here with a warning to jump ahead 10 seconds if you feel you might be distressed at the sight of this poor dog's wounds. I hope Daisy made a full recovery. In 2012, horses at a local equestrian centre in nearby Sear Green were attacked and left with deep gashes. The attending vet stated that they suspected a big cat might have been the culprit. In more recent years, I recall seeing a similar account of a horse attack at a different equestrian centre near Milton Keynes. However, I have been unable to track down the news article after the passage of time but I do recall when I saw the photos of the more recent report, it immediately prompted a memory of the Sear Green attack. Prince's Risborough is also a hotspot for sightings, though in this local area, the sightings usually detail a sandy coloured puma type of cat. There are many articles and reports out there, but here is one from December 2018. The headline reads, Beast of Bucks is back, after terrified driver reports spotting mystery feline. The article acknowledges that for years locals have reported brief glimpses of a large cat, believed to be a puma and dubbed the Beast of Bucks, stalking the area. Paolo is then quoted as providing the witness account. He said, On Friday the 30th of November, one of Buckinghamshire's pumas became a reality for yet another person. Turning out of the driveway, only 50 metres from her front door, seeing a fully grown puma in the headlights. Staring clearly at a large predatory cat native to the Americas comes as a shock when living in Prince's Risborough. Just a few weeks ago in April 2021, the Bucks Free Press ran this account, headlined, Beast of Bucks Returns? Shocked Walker Sees Puma Near Former Wickham Ski Slope. The article quotes eyewitness Natalie Godleyman and states, Natalie Godleyman said that despite long-term rumours of big cats lurking in the Chilterns, she always thought they were a myth, until she saw what she described as a tan-coloured puma around Keep Hill Woods on Thursday. She said she has lived in the area for 29 years and visits the woods every day, but has never seen anything like that before. Describing what she saw, Natalie told Bucks Free Press, It was basking in the sun, in the long grass. I couldn't tell what on earth it was. Then it got up, and it bounded across the field, and I saw its silhouette and long thin tail. It took me a minute to realise, and I couldn't believe it was a puma. She added, Now I'm a bit scared. I wasn't carrying my phone at the time, annoyingly. I'm worried, as I have a small spaniel, and worried it could possibly attack me too if it wanted to. I'm not going to stop going in the woods though, but it now seems like a life and death situation. Now every time I hear a squirrel rustle in the leaves, it makes me jump. Subsequent to the reporting of Natalie's story, the Bucks Free Press followed up with another story on the 19th of May headlined, War Beast of Bucks Sightings? Scared Widmer End resident sees large dog-sized black cat. The article states, One resident in Widmer End 
posted on social media site next door to warn her neighbours about what she saw in the early hours of the morning. On May 10 she wrote, I live down Windmill Lane and at 4am this morning I am sure I saw a big black cat in my front garden. It was over a metre long and only took four strides to cover a four metre area. Please be aware. When questioned where it could have been a fox, she added, No, I can see the foxes clearly when I look out as I have a light at the front which show their colour. This animal was at the back of my husband's car and was almost the same length as the width of the car. I could go into more and more sightings, but I will leave it there, as I'd like to move on to discussing the impacts and implications of big cats such as the Beast of Bucks. I associate with Natalie Godleyman's account very strongly and personally. After I had my own sighting, it really made me question a number of things. In the cold light of day, reality hit me hard, that such huge cats were present and living among us. To see a big, strong cat saunter across the road and casually patrol my estate, in front of my own home, it really forced me to consider a number of safety issues. Now, in many ways, my wife and I are a perfect match. We complement each other very well, as we have different skills and strengths and outlooks, but we share many common interests. And after this sighting, we had to work through some issues. For a start, my wife normally enjoyed walking our dog very much. This was Sammy, the cutest and most loving dog in the world we've ever owned. However, a regular route my wife liked to take at the time was into the woodlands which bordered the R estate and through the adjacent golf club. Having made that walk myself, I knew exactly how cut off that winding woodland pathway was and how seldom you would spot golfers and other walkers on this particular route. Faced with the reality that a black panther had likely not only passed through those woods, but also from time to time may make it its home, or its hunting ground, brought about, in my mind at least, a very terrifying prospect as to the security of both my wife and my dog, who I love very much. But it didn't end there. I worked from home at the time, and for much of the year I would walk Sammy myself in the evenings on the football field near our house. I found myself holding a much heightened sense of alert, closing in on panic, when I needed to walk Sammy on those dark evenings, and in subsequent months I had to address these fears in my own mind. For example, a large area of grassland was allowed to grow long through the summer to above knee height, and there were numerous large trees with heavy leaf cover. These all now felt like places the panther could potentially stalk me from, or Sammy, or any of our neighbours. Partly, this was because when you research big cats, you can find some very distressing images and videos on the internet. There are places in the world where big cats and humans coexist somewhat tentatively, and there are other places whereby big cats seem to feel compelled to encroach upon human habitats, and when those situations occur, it can be very deadly. Let me assure you that no matter how strong masculine or well-trained in combat you think you are, if you look into the eyes of this on a dark night, you will think twice about how safe you and your loved ones truly are. I have dwelled upon the situation much in the intervening years, and have come to a number of conclusions. There seems to be multiple species of big cats roaming the British countryside. The cats seen today are not first generation releases or escapees. Breeding populations do seem to exist, and mothers and litters have been reported in some eyewitness accounts. They have a large migratory area and can span multiple counties. They have, with present numbers, managed to remain largely undetected. This is changing as numbers increase. Without predation or capture programs, their numbers are almost certain to increase further. Humans, livestock and household pets may in time have to encounter big cats on a more frequent basis here in the UK. We find ourselves in a bit of a unique position. There have been a limited number of occasions when physical evidence has been positively identified in the UK as belonging to a big cat, yet official positions have not caught up. 
big cat law in the UK is still considered cryptozoology. There is no plan to contain or deal with big cats. Police are not capable of dealing with sightings and many attempts to track big cats in investigations have failed. No one knows what the situation will be in 15 to 20 years with a continually expanding breeding population. And we don't know how much they hunt versus scavenge from roadkill and human waste and how that balance might change in subsequent years. Think about it. Big cats might live 12 to 15 years. They can breed year round and females can have multiple litters per year. Each mother that has a litter may have multiple males which will leave her around age two to establish their own territories and the cycle will continue. Sightings have increased since the 1980s and have become regular in Buckinghamshire since the turn of the millennium. The cats seen around 2000 or 2001 may now have had four or six generations succeeding them in the wild. Anecdotal evidence suggests that their numbers and territories are expanding. So unfortunately, it is my conclusion and assertion that the sad reality is that we're probably past the point whereby a government policy and funding would actually be useful as a means of completely reversing their presence in the British countryside. The time for that seems to have now elapsed by more than one decade. I openly and confidently predict that sightings will continue to be lodged and that as they do, zoological acceptance will be attained and perhaps then some funding for study will be made available. It is said that another consequence will be, by my estimation at least, that verification will come from injuries tied to livestock, our pets and or to humans ourselves. And then at that point in time, the broader population may have the same jolt of reality that both I and Natalie Godleyman have had to reckon with. To know that in the darkness of night, these creatures are stirring. You may live in a town or city and not yet know that they roam the very same streets that you do only at night. Our wonderful woodlands might soon become too dangerous to trek alone. And as these creatures expand their numbers and territories, so too will their likely protective status. As I fear, instead of viewing these creatures as invasive, I expect the cat's interests will be well protected via Parliament. If you doubt my fearful prediction, then very well. However, my fears are not without precedent. A boy was already attacked a few years ago by what he described as a panther, and multiple reports can be found from all around the country of attacks on dogs. For what little it is worth, if by some small chance public attitudes were to change and people of sufficient influence were to address this soon, I would endorse an extensive effort to try and capture the cats that are out there more in hope than expectation that the situation could be brought under some measure of control. A basic understanding might then be sought on their habits and behaviours, and the captured animals may well be content with life in a wildlife park. However, as set out already, I strongly doubt that the UK authorities will act in any meaningful way to control these cats, and will likely take the opposite position when their presence is firmly established. Have you ever had a big cat sighting of your own? If you have, then please do let me know in the comments down below. Let me know too what you think of these eyewitness reports, including my own, and what, if anything, you think the UK government can or should be doing about this situation. Don't be afraid to click the like button. Likes and comments tell the YouTube algorithm that this is a good video, which helps me out as YouTube doesn't seem to like me very much. I have two channels now, this one and UKPF Extra. If you would like to see the full range of my content, please be sure to subscribe to both channels and turn on all notifications via the bell icon. I may cover big cat sighting reports on either channel in the future, so if this is a topic you would like to see more information on, then please do click to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll never miss a future video. Anyway. As always, all that's left for me to say is, thanks very much for watching.